Now, last uh, talk for this uh, day. So, Pira, 19 all woven stint, when and why, by Dr. Pandey. Well, as my slides load up, I just wanted to uh, thank the steering committee for CBI for the invitation to speak to you today, and uh, specifically Dr. Shishabor, I just wanted to call out to you for your ongoing mentorship and support. Um, and so, let's see if we can get my slides lit up. So I have no disclosures. <clears throat> Still have no disclosures. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to hopefully uh, emphasize a lot of the points that Dr. Waldo and Dr. Pena talked about and uh, just lesion characteristics. And uh, for those of us who treat SFA and popliteal artery stenosis, there are a number of treatment options. The challenge with trying to pick which one is these um, lesions are attached to patients who have varying rates of diabetes and whatnot, but there's also characteristics of these lesions that can um, uh, affect the success of revascularization. And we know a number of these um, issues uh, from uh, uh, prior studies, uh, but I think it's important to consider these uh, issues when you're picking the strategy to fix these uh, lesions. Uh, interwoven nitinol stents um, uh, are unique in that they're uh, basically nickel titanium, but six independent wires interwoven to create this stent. And what that provides is vascular mimetic properties that um, allow the uh, stent to conform to the stress of vessel. This uh, in, uh, lab model basically shows you that the uh, Sapera stent is really resistant to um, compression and um, uh, bending and maintains a nice circular lumen, which gives ex exceptional durability and strength. And uh, it also has a unique delivery system. Conformability and flexibility is particularly important for the femoral popliteal segment where uh, in calcified lesions you need radial strength with limited recoil um, as is shown in the IVIS imaging here. A conventional uh, self-expanding stent to subject to calcification and um, with proper predilatation, the um, Sapera generally gives you a more uh, circular lumen and it maintains that luminal shape um, over time. Uh, probably more durably than self-expanding stents. And probably one of the most important uh, uh, advantages of this stent platform is the one-to-one -one, um, sizing that reduces outward radial force. And we've heard from our other speakers that, of course, stent fracture, restenosis, and calcification can all pose problems, but oversizing is probably uh, one of the strongest um, uh, factors when we deal with restenosis. As you um, are all probably aware that uh, when we place self-expanding stents, we tend to oversize them, one to two millimeters. But when stents are oversized, um, as we just saw in the Viabon data, we tend to have issues. And uh, by, by using one-to-one -one sizing with this particular um, interwoven platform, we uh, mitigate some of that risk. So these, uh, these stents uh, must be uh, um, placed after uh, very careful predilatation. It should be, uh, I, I tend to do slow and long duration predilatations to really um, allow for full expansion of the vessel. Um, it's the, the balloon really ideally should be a, a millimeter larger than the, the vessel and the stent size, and you want to size this one to one. That allows for a slow controlled deployment, and I find that excellent sheath support, particularly for the larger um, six and six five millimeter uh, Saperas, helps quite a bit. Well, going um, way back to our initial um, registry data on Sapera, uh, Dr. Scheinert uh, gave the European experience in 107 consecutive patients. Um, all of these are SFAs, 31% uh, chronic total occlusions, and if, uh, over half had moderate or severe calcification. The mean lesion length was 90 millimeters, and patency was very respectable at one year at 85%, and importantly, there were no uh, fractures with this stent. They took it to the next level with this popliteal registry where these are all um, uh, patients with popliteal artery disease, which was previously kind of a no-go zone because of the issues of stent fracture. 23% of these patients had critical limb ischemia and uh, nearly half had chronic total occlusions. High technical success, no stent fractures with these, and again, outstanding patency given the location and um, the other currently available treatments at the time. 
Uh, this was a really nice uh, summary of the data on Sapira. I'd invite you to take a look at by Drs. Bishu and Armstrong um, that, that kind of summarize some of the unique characteristics of the um, interwoven night and owl stent uh, research that's been done and the, the data that's been collected in comparison to conventional night and owl self-expanding stent studies. And I think what's clear to see is, um, uh, particularly to like dig Sapira popliteal study I just showed you, uh, popliteal artery stenosis is, uh, and, and treatment is generally underreported in the uh, prior uh, literature with general self-expanding stents. Critical limb ischemia is the same, and uh, the patency rates for this platform are very respectable compared. Uh, the Sapera um, uh, US IDE trial was superb, and uh, that was a US study of 264 patients over 34 sites. All, uh, just about all of these were clodicants. Um, uh, unique to this study, the uh, distal SFA and popliteal segments were in heavily included and incorporated in the lesions treated. Mean lesion length was 78 millimeters. Moderate severe calcification was common, and um, uh, binary restenosis was defined with a PSVR over 2. The outcomes were, again, uh, a very impressive, 86% at one year. But um, what was particularly important to note about this study is that when the stent was deployed nominally, nine, nearly 91% of um, uh, patients had uh, patent stents at a year. Uh, uh, the flip side, when the stent was not deployed correctly, um, patients suffered. Uh, confirmation of efficacy and novel stent design was really the result of superb. There were, no, again, no stent fractures, no differences in outcomes, excellent results, um, and uh, careful lesion preparation was required. And this really gets to the point that if you have nominal deployment, you have excellent uh, 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 patency, but severe um, elongation in particular really decreases the efficacy of the stent platform. The three-year follow-up data on Superb uh, remain very uh, encouraging, and again, we see those same patterns in um, clinically driven uh, target lesion revascularization with elongation and compression. So the takeaways from the data thus far, particularly the Leipzig um, experience and um, Superb, is six, there's uh, incredible success with long lesions, particularly if those involve the popliteal segment. Deployment issues are really critical, and calcified lesions with appropriate predilatation may be a niche for this device. So here's some real-world data, and this was um, uh, the biggest uh, collection of patients we have so far. From Germany, again, 439 patients. Um, a lot of uh, um, CTOs and calcium Long lesions now are getting up in size. As Dr. Pena um, pointed out, these tend to be um, uh, more complex patients and, again, uh, very respectable patency rates with no stent fractures. Um, uh, U.S. experience of 48 patients um, from Dr. Brescia and colleagues, again, high rates of CLI, complex TAS CD lesions. 69% of these lesions involve the popliteal segment again, and an incredible 240 millimeters uh, uh, mean lesion length. Compare that to the superb I just showed you, which was 78. These patients did very well, and really um, at 80% 80, 80 primary patency at a year, and really no difference um, up, up to and beyond uh, lesions greater than 300 millimeters. Um, Dr. Scheinart also uh, showed us, again, more encouraging data in the popliteal segment. So if you have a patient who's had a prior bypass, you can see the surgical clips there, and you need to go anterograde, retrograde. This popliteal is going to get torn up a little bit. You've got a lot of calcium. This data really gives me confidence that placing a Sapera here is probably going to be the best option for this patient. 88% primary patency rate, no difference in patency between SFA or popliteal segments. And another study, a U.S. study of 34 patients, again, 59% in the distal popliteal segment below the knee, primary patency 79%. Predictors of restenosis are important. In one study, uh, this is a study out of Hong Kong, 164 lesions. Um, younger age, for whatever reason, long lesions, long combined um, length of stents, which in other studies has not been a factor, but importantly, small diameter stents, so I tend to avoid using the smaller Sapera stents if I can help it. No difference for presence in diabetes, CLI, claudication, or number of runoff vessels. This is an important study on the modes of stent failure for Sapera, um, uh, 97 Australian patients and basically found that oversizing was associated with higher rates of stenosis, stent into susception, which is not um, easy to say fast and um, uh, is um, not a factor for other self-expanding stents, um, led to stent occlusion, compromised inflow and outflow also were factors. And these were similar factors in the U.S. Um, uh, study by Dr. Leon. So uh, just some other technical co um, considerations. You know, you have to deploy this stent slowly. Um, you get sl uh, smoke rings and stretching, so um, go slow. Into susception, mag up when you're deploying this stent. 
Um, you have to be careful that the catheter releases completely from the stent, otherwise you'll pull your stent out um, with the delivery system and you'll get stretched in the proximal stent. Osteolesions can be conquered from retrograde axis, um, but is a disadvantage um, if you're deploying um, a usual anterograde fashion. Overlapping superior stents of different size also um, can be an issue and must be precise in deployment, and there's a new delivery mechanism in the works to make all this easier. So when and why to consider interwoven self-expanding stents for long lesions, complex calcified lesions, popliteal lesions. Um, this technology, I think, is the best there is for those sorts of things. Uh, conclusions, interwoven stents are, um, are effective for long calcified tortuous lesions, especially in the popliteal segment. There are technical limits of the device. You need to know those, um, uh, particularly the small diameter, osteolesions, and severe stent elongation. And proper deployment ensures the best results with durable three-year patency. Um, so you, if you, uh, I think, understand your patients and their, their lesion characteristics, you can harmonize the data and technology for great results. Thanks. Thank you.